Now, it's a moment scientists have been waiting for. What happens when the small, icy world of Comet 67P, which is being followed by the European spacecraft Rosetta, passes its closest point to the Sun, a mere 115 million miles away? The landmark moment happened in the early hours of this morning. And in the run-up, the comet released bright jet streams of gas and dust from its surface as temperatures warmed up. Our science editor, David Shookman, reports. The dramatic sight of a comet tumbling through space, the clearest view we've ever had of a comet's tail forming, from the gas and dust flowing off it, along with water, enough to fill ten Olympic pools every day. A strange world changing before our eyes as it flies near the sun. This is potentially the most crucial stage of the whole mission. The comet is on an orbit that takes it from way out beyond Jupiter, swinging in towards the centre of the solar system, every six years and today it's passing about 115 million miles from the Sun. Being this close means the comet is heating up. Jets of gas and dust are blasting out of it, forming the tail, the feature that makes comets so distinctive. Now what's amazing is that for the past year the Rosetta spacecraft has been flying right alongside the comet. It has a ringside seat at what could be the most dramatic moment. The first close-up look at how a comet actually evolves. Already the dust billowing off it has been growing and accelerating. Now, spare a thought for the little lander Philae on the surface of the comet since last November. Nothing's been heard from it for a while and the intense heat right now may finish it off. This mission was always going to be risky, but already it's told us what comets are made of and how this one has the chemical compounds useful for getting life started. When the lander touched down last November, Professor Monica Grady was among the scientists overwhelmed with the achievement. And today, she's still enthusiastic about what they're finding out. We have never been this close to a comet when it is at its closest point to the sun. We have never learned this sort of information before. It is absolutely amazing. The images, the data, the gas, the dust, the tail, the surface, wonderful. A boulder flies off the comet. There is a chance the whole thing could break up. Whatever happens, for the first time, we'll have cameras ready to see it. David Shookman, BBC News. The government says it's going to clamp down on the time it takes for local authorities to decide on planning applications for fracking. The Energy Secretary, Amber Rudd, told councils they must make a decision within the present 16-month time frame or face ministers taking over. While Ed Thomas is in Little Plumpton in Lancashire for us now. Ed. Arita, this is all because of what happened here in Lancashire. Under intense pressure, the county council rejected an application to frack in this field there, but it took them more than a year to do so. Now, the industry believes that there's more than enough shale gas underneath my feet to power the UK for up to 40 years. And that's the reason why the government is desperate for this to happen as soon as possible. It was the moment plans to frack were thrown out of Lancashire, Brand the end of a year-long planning battle. Fresh. But today, it's the government warned all councils that the country needs shell gas, and in the future, ministers could decide fracking applications if councils take too long. It's not fair to the local communities, it's not fair to the applicant, and I want to make sure that this is fairer, and so I'm asking them to stick to those seven, 16 weeks in order to make a decision. It should be perfectly doable. So what happened at Lancashire County Council? 40,000 was priced 